The origins of World War I remain controversial and debated questions. The war began in the Balkans in late July 1914 and ended in November 1918, leaving 17 million dead and 20 million wounded. A long-term analysis of its origins seeks to explain why two rival sets of powers, Germany and Austro-Hungary on the one hand, and Russia, France, Serbia and Great Britain on the other, had come into conflict by 1914. It examines political, territorial and economic conflicts, militarism, a complex web of alliances and alignments, imperialism, the growth of nationalism, and the power vacuum created by the decline of the Ottoman Empire. Other important long-term or structural factors were unresolved territorial disputes, the perceived breakdown of the balance of power in Europe, convoluted and fragmented governance, the arms races of the previous decades, and military planning. A short-term analysis focuses on why the conflicting sets of powers went to war when they did. The immediate causes lay in decisions made by statesmen and generals during the July crisis of 1914, triggered by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife, Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, on 28 June 1914. The assassin, Gavrilo Princip, was an ethnic Serb and Yugoslav nationalist from the group Young Bosnia, which was supported by the Black Hand a nationalist organization in Serbia. The crisis escalated as the conflict between Austria-Hungary and Serbia came to involve Russia, Germany, France, and ultimately Belgium and Great Britain. Other factors that came into play during the diplomatic crisis that preceded the war included misperceptions of intent, fatalism that war was inevitable, and the speed of the crisis, which was exacerbated by delays and misunderstandings in diplomatic communications. The crisis followed a series of diplomatic clashes among the great powers over European and colonial issues in the decades before 1914 that had left tensions high. In turn, these public clashes can be traced to changes in the balance of power in Europe since 1867. Consensus on the origins of the war remains elusive since historians disagree on key factors and place differing emphasis on a variety of actors. This is compounded by changing historical arguments over time, particularly the delayed availability of classified historical archives. In differing geographic zeitgeist then prevailing, the deepest distinction among historians is between those who focus on the actions of Germany and Austria-Hungary as key and those who focus on the wider group of actors. Secondary fault lines exist between those who believe that Germany deliberately planned a European war, those who believe that the war was ultimately unplanned but still caused principally by Germany and Austria-Hungary taking risks and those who believe that either all or some of the other powers, namely Russia, France, Serbia and Great Britain, played a more significant role in causing the war than has been traditionally suggested. Polarization of Europe 1887 to 1914 To understand the long-term origins of the war in 1914 it is essential to understand how the powers formed into two competing sets, sharing common aims and enemies. These two sets became, by August 1914, Germany and Austro-Hungary on the one hand and Russia, France, Serbia and Great Britain on the other. German realignment to Austro-Hungary and Russian realignment to France 1887-1892. In 1887 German and Russian alignment was secured by means of a secret reinsurance treaty arranged by Otto von Bismarck. However, in 1890 the treaty was allowed to lapse in favor of the dual alliance between Germany and Austro-Hungary. In response Russia secured the Franco-Russian alliance in 1892, which was to last until 1917. French foreign policy towards Germany, driven by revanchism. Some of the distant origins of World War I can be seen in the results and consequences of the Franco-Prussian War in 1870-71 and the concurrent unification of Germany. Over four decades before, 
Germany had won decisively and established a powerful empire, while France went into chaos and military decline for years. A legacy of animosity grew between France and Germany following the German annexation of Alsace-Lorraine. The annexation caused widespread resentment in France, giving rise to the desire for revenge, known as revanchism. French sentiments wanted to avenge military and territorial losses and the displacement of France as the preeminent continental military power. French defeat in the war had sparked political instability, culminating in a revolution and the formation of the French Third Republic. Bismarck was wary of French desire for revenge. He achieved peace by isolating France and balancing the ambitions of Austria, Hungary and Russia in the Balkans. During his later years he tried to placate the French by encouraging their overseas expansion. However, anti-German sentiment remained. A Franco-German colonial entente that was made in 1884 in protest of an Anglo-Portuguese agreement in West Africa proved short-lived after a pro-imperialist government under Jules Ferry in France fell in 1885. France eventually recovered from its defeat, paid its war indemnity, and rebuilt its military strength again. But it was smaller than Germany in terms of population, and thus felt insecure next to its more powerful neighbor. British alignment towards France and Russia 1898-1907 The Triple Entente Britain abandoned the policy of holding aloof from the continental powers, so-called splendid isolation, in the 1900s after being isolated during the Boer War. Britain concluded agreements, limited to colonial affairs, with her two major colonial rivals, the Entente Cordiale with France in 1904 and the Anglo-Russian Entente of 1907. Some historians see Britain's alignment as principally a reaction to an assertive German foreign policy and the build-up of its navy from 1898 which led to the Anglo-German naval arms race. Others, most notably Niall Ferguson, argue that Britain chose France and Russia over Germany because Germany was too weak an ally to provide an effective counterbalance to the other powers and could not provide Britain with the imperial security achieved by the Entente Agreements. In the words of British diplomat Arthur Nicholson it was far more disadvantageous to us to have an unfriendly France and Russia than an unfriendly Germany. Ferguson argues that the British government rejected German alliance overtures not because Germany began to pose a threat to Britain, but, on the contrary because they realized she did not pose a threat. The impact of the Triple Entente was therefore twofold, to improve British relations with France and her ally Russia and to demote the importance to Britain of good relations with Germany. It was not that antagonism toward Germany caused its isolation, but rather that the new system itself channeled an intensified hostility towards the German Empire. The so-called Triple Entente between Britain, France and Russia is often compared to the Triple Alliance between Germany, Austria-Hungary and Italy. But historians caution against the comparison. The Entente, in contrast to the Triple Alliance or the Franco-Russian Alliance, was not an alliance of mutual defense and Britain therefore felt free to make her own foreign policy decisions in 1914. As British Foreign Office official Air Crow minuted, the fundamental fact of course is that the Entente is not an alliance. For purposes of ultimate emergencies it may be found to have no substance at all. For the Entente is nothing more than a frame of mind, a view of general policy which is shared by the governments of two countries, but which may be, or become, so vague as to lose all content. A series of diplomatic incidents between 1905 and 1914 heightened tensions between the great powers and reinforced the existing alignments beginning with the First Moroccan Crisis. First Moroccan Crisis 1905-6, strengthening the Entente. The First Moroccan Crisis was an international crisis between March 1905 and May 1906 over the status of Morocco. In the words of historian Christopher Clark, the Anglo-French Entente was strengthened rather than weakened by the German challenge to France in 
Morocco, Bosnian crisis 1908 relations between Russia and Serbia and Austria-Hungary worsen. In 1908 Austria-Hungary announced its annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, dual provinces in the Balkan region of Europe formerly under the control of the Ottoman Empire, though Bosnia and Herzegovina were still nominally under the control of the Ottoman Sultan in 1908. Austria-Hungary had administered the provinces since the Congress of Berlin in 1878, when the great powers of Europe awarded the dual monarchy the right to occupy the two provinces, with the legal title to remain with Turkey. The announcement in October 1908 of Austria-Hungary's annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina upset the fragile balance of power in the Balkans enraging Serbia and pan-Slavic nationalists throughout Europe. Though weakened Russia was forced to submit to its humiliation, its foreign office still viewed Austria-Hungary's actions as overly aggressive and threatening. Russia's response was to encourage pro-Russian, anti-Austrian sentiment in Serbia and other Balkan provinces provoking Austrian fears of Slavic expansionism in the region. Second Moroccan crisis 1911 The Entente holds again. The Agadir crisis was the international tension sparked by the deployment of a substantial force of French troops in the interior of Morocco in April 1911. Germany reacted by sending the gunboat SMS Panther to the Moroccan port of Agadir on 1 July 1911. Rather than scaring Britain into turning toward Germany, increased fear and hostility drew Britain closer to France. British backing of France during the crisis reinforced the entente between the two countries, increasing Anglo-German estrangement, deepening the divisions which would culminate in World War I, significantly for the events of August 1914. The crisis led British Foreign Secretary Edward Grey and France to make a secret naval agreement where the Royal Navy promised to protect the northern coast of France from German attack, while France concentrated her fleet in the western Mediterranean and agreed to protect British interests there. France was thus able to guard her communications with her North African colonies and Britain to concentrate more force in home waters to oppose the German high seas fleet. The cabinet was not informed of this agreement until August 1914. Italo-Turkish War Ottomans Abandoned 1911-12 The Italo-Turkish or Turco-Italian War was fought between the Ottoman Empire and the Kingdom of Italy from September 29, 1911, to October 18, 1912. As a result of this conflict, Italy captured the Ottoman Tripolitania Villae, of which the most notable sub-provinces were Fezzan, Cyrenaica, and Tripoli itself. These territories together formed what became known as Italian Libya. The main significance for the First World War was that this war made it clear that no great power appeared to wish to support the Ottoman Empire any longer and this paved the way for the Balkan Wars. Christopher Clark stated, Italy launched a war of conquest on an African province of the Ottoman Empire, triggering a chain of opportunistic assaults on Ottoman territories across the Balkans. The system of geographical balances that had enabled local conflicts to be contained was swept away. Balkan Wars 1912-13 Serbian and Russian power grows. The Balkan Wars were two conflicts that took place in the Balkan Peninsula in southeastern Europe in 1912 and 1913. Four Balkan states defeated the Ottoman Empire in the First War, one of the four, Bulgaria, was defeated in the Second War. The Ottoman Empire lost nearly all of its holdings in Europe. Austria-Hungary, although not a combatant, was weakened as a much enlarged Serbia pushed for union of the South Slavic peoples. The Balkan Wars in 1912-1913 increased international tension between the Russian Empire and Austria-Hungary. It also led to a strengthening of Serbia and a weakening of the Ottoman Empire and Bulgaria, who might otherwise have kept Serbia under control. 
thus disrupting the balance of power in Europe in favor of Russia. Russia initially agreed to avoid territorial changes, but later in 1912 supported Serbia's demand for an Albanian port. An international conference was held in London in 1912-1913 where it was agreed to create an independent Albania. However, both Serbia and Montenegro refused to comply. After an Austrian, and then an international naval demonstration in early 1912 and Russia's withdrawal of support, Serbia backed down. Montenegro was not as compliant and on May 2, the Austrian Council of Ministers met and decided to give Montenegro a last chance to comply and, if it would not, then to resort to military action. However, seeing the Austrian military preparations, the Montenegrins requested the ultimatum be delayed and complied. 76. The Serbian government, having failed to get Albania, now demanded that the other spoils of the First Balkan War be reapportioned and Russia failed to pressure Serbia to back down. Serbia and Greece allied against Bulgaria, which responded with a preemptive strike against their forces beginning the Second Balkan War. 77. The Bulgarian army crumbled of quickly when Turkey and Romania joined the war. The Balkan Wars strained the German-Austro-Hungarian alliance. The attitude of the German government to Austrian requests of support against Serbia was initially both divided and inconsistent. After the German Imperial War Council of 8 December 1912, it was clear that Germany was not ready to support Austria-Hungary in a war against Serbia and her likely allies. In addition, German diplomacy before, during, and after the Second Balkan War was pro-Greek and pro-Romanian and in opposition to Austria-Hungary's increasingly pro-Bulgarian views. The result was tremendous damage to Austro-German relations. Austrian Foreign Minister Leopold von Berchtold remarked to German Ambassador Heinrich von Tschirschke in July 1913 that Austria-Hungary might as well belong to the other grouping for all the good Berlin had been 78 in September 1913. It was learned that Serbia was moving into Albania and Russia was doing nothing to restrain it. While the Serbian government would not guarantee to respect Albania's territorial integrity and suggested there would be some frontier modifications, in October 1913, the Council of Ministers decided to send Serbia a warning followed by an ultimatum, that Germany and Italy be notified of some action and asked for support, and that spies be sent to report if there was an actual withdrawal. Serbia responded to the warning with defiance and the ultimatum was dispatched on October 17 and received the following day. It demanded that Serbia evacuate Albanian territory within eight days. Serbia complied, and the Kaiser made a congratulatory visit to Vienna to try to fix some of the damage done earlier in the year. 79. The conflicts demonstrated that a localized war in the Balkans could alter the balance of power without provoking general war and reinforced the attitude in the Austrian government. This attitude had been developing since the Bosnian annexation crisis that ultimatums were the only effective means of influencing Serbia and that Russia would not back its refusal with force. They also dealt catastrophic damage to the Habsburg economy, citation needed, Franco-Russian alliance changes, the Balkan inception scenario, 1911-1913. The original Franco-Russian alliance was formed to protect both France and Russia from a German attack. In the event of such an attack both states would mobilize in tandem, placing Germany under the threat of two-front war. However, there were limits placed on the alliance so that it was essentially defensive in character. Throughout the 1890s and the 1900s the French and the Russian made clear the limits of the alliance did not extend to provocations caused by the other's adventurous foreign policy. For example, Russia warned France that the alliance may not operate if the French provoked the Germans in North Africa. Equally, the French insisted to the Russians 
that they should not use the alliance to provoke Austro-Hungary or Germany in the Balkans and that France did not recognize in the Balkans a vital strategic interest for France or for Russia. In the last 18 to 24 months before the outbreak of the war this changed. At the end of 1911 and particularly during the Balkans wars themselves in 1912-13, the French view changed. France now accepted the importance of the Balkans to Russia. Moreover, France clearly stated if, that as a result of a conflict in the Balkans that war breaks out between Austria and Serbia, that France would stand by Russia. Thus the Franco-Russian alliance changed in character, and by a consequence of that Serbia became a security salient for Russia and France as they bought into the future scenario of a war of Balkan inception. Regardless of who started such a war, the alliance would respond nonetheless. It would view this conflict as a casus foderus, as a trigger for the alliance. Christopher Clark described this change as a very important development in the pre-war system which made the events of 1914 possible. Anglo-German date on 1912-14. Historians caution that, taken together, the preceding crisis should not be seen as an argument that a European war was inevitable in 1914. Significantly, the Anglo-German naval race was over by 1912. In April 1913, Britain and Germany signed an agreement over the African territories of the Portuguese Empire which was expected to collapse imminently. Moreover, the Russians were threatening British interests in Persia and India to the extent that in 1914, there were signs that the British were cooling in their relations with Russia and that an understanding with Germany might be useful. The British were deeply annoyed by St. Petersburg's failure to observe the terms of the agreement struck in 1907 and began to feel an arrangement of some kind with Germany might serve as a useful corrective, British diplomat Arthur Nicholson wrote in May 1914. Since I have been at the Foreign Office I have not seen such calm waters.